Spartan Nation. SMD Law is the official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Check them out on the interwebs at smdalaw.com or at 866-529-3537. No matter where you are in the state of Michigan, Upper Peninsula, Lower Peninsula, it doesn't matter. They have an office near you. So whether you need to send a letter to an annoying neighbor, or you're a criminal and you need defense, maybe you just have problems with elder law, check them out, smdalaw.com today. The official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Call them first, then you act. Welcome back, Spartan Nation Radio. As always, we love to bring in the Grand Poobah of SMD Law, the official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Remember, when your next decision matters, no matter where you are in the state of Michigan, border to border, coast to coast, it is SMD A Law. When your next decision matters, you call them first and then you act. SMDALaw.com on the internet. It's SMD Law, 866 529 3537. Let's bring in the Grand Poobah, Jeff Michalowski. Jeff, how are you? Great. How are you doing, Hondo? I'm doing great, but before we get going, you take your kids to Pittsburgh to go to a pirate game. All you can eat hot dogs, and your son comes out world famous. Tell us about it. <laughs> well, not only did we go see the Pirates game, but we also went to see our beloved Detroit Red Wings play the feared Pittsburgh Penguins. It's hard to be feared if you're a penguin, isn't it? Yes, sir. So we went to that game, and then next day we're we're bumming around town looking for something to do, and the news guy is out there looking for people to interview about the Pirates running out of buns on Dollar Dog Night on a Thursday. Well, it was Friday about noon after we were getting ready for the 7 o'clock game, and they were taking some footage of the empty uh, streets, the empty ticket windows, and so they interview my son, and they ask him, how many hot dogs could you eat? And he said, probably four, because I'm a big eater. Mind you, he is 11. And they uh, asked him a couple questions, and then, then the doozy comes out. Well, you couldn't eat a hot dog without a bun. And his answer, quote, no, no, I just can't eat meat without anything on it. <laughs> uh, no. Thank God he didn't say anything that his buddies won't rib him for for the rest of his life. Huh? It, isn't that the <laughs> truth? Now, I want to let you know something. I've already put a le uh, an email into the station. I wanted to start the show playing the audio of that. But we, <laughs> we can't play the audio without their permission because it's theirs. So I want you to know that oh, was my funny. intent when you sent it to me via Twitter. Uh, well, let's work on it. Let's get it out there. I agree. So, my friend, I want you to know I've got my Bigfoot baseball hats. Bigfoot baseball is the premier youth baseball league, uh, not league, but uh a set of teams in the state of Michigan based out of Sterling Heights and leftover hockey. I got the winter heads. Tell us about leftover hockey. <laughs> leftover hockey, the famed sports franchise taking its name from the famed Hamlin pub sharks of the men's Sunday night CD league out of Onyx suburban ice. Uh, we became the leftovers cause we're the leftover guys that kind of branched off from the Hamlin pub sharks and are now the Hamlin Pub Leftovers. Awesome. Um, we just finished up winter season. We're going to start up spring season in about two weeks. Yes, we're a bunch of adults that act like kids when we go play hockey. Well, listen, we've always posted the podcast of Spartan Nation Radio, but the last two weeks we've been actually putting just as a standalone on SpartanNation.com your actual weekly interviews. So we got a bunch of new uh, emails this week. All right, let's hear those emails. Fire away. Catherine and Ben have sent in an email, and they are from um, – hold on here. Macomb, they say, Dear Mr. Carpenter, we're having a problem. Our uh, neighbor loves to fly drones. He's constantly flying his drones over our property. Now, he's not trying to peep in. He's not doing anything immoral in that way. But it drives our dogs crazy. We don't like it. Our kids don't want to play outside with those things flying up above them. We called the police, and the police say that we don't own the airspace. This seems to be ridiculous. Does there seem to be anything we can do? When we asked him to stop, he told us the same thing. You don't own the airspace. Well, that is true. You don't own your airspace. Uh, the airspace is regulated uh, beyond a certain point now. There is a reasonable expectation of privacy, and there is a um, 
reasonable expectation of use of fair use of the property and some of the year above it. Um, but if he, as long as he isn't really flying and buzzing your backyard, there's not a whole lot you can do. If he's in a uh, safe and fair and reasonable manner, probably not a lot you can do. We could always try to write a cease and desist letter for you. Hondo Macomb Township is right on our back door on the other side of M59. So uh, not too far away, maybe something we could stir about a little bit by at least writing a letter and, and seeing what happens. I mean, if, if anything, he can avoid your house and your property and fly around it and go annoy the neighbors a little bit. That's the best advice I could give you. All right. When you're next, decision matters. You call them first and then you act. Jeff, I want to uh, stick down in your neck of the woods. This comes from Birmingham. This is from Beth. Beth said, Hondo, my husband and I are going through a divorce. It seems to be that anything I want, he automatically decides he wants. If I don't want it, he doesn't care. It's getting to be very annoying. Is there ever an opportunity when you can just say, fine, let's sell everything? What does Jeff think about that approach? Because there's a lot of things he wants I'm not even going to argue about. And at this point, if he's going to fight me on the few things I want, what does Jeff think of me just saying, fine, let's sell everything? Well, it's a fair approach. It's, it's the wisdom of King Solomon there. Um, a lot of the judges might actually order some of the personal property to be sold from time to time. It's rare, but could happen. Um, a lot of times the judges will actually order cases to what we call alternative dispute resolution, even family law cases where a mediator will step in and they could help uh, decide the issues. Um, hopefully there is competent legal counsel on either side to help steer through some of these issues. Um, but a lot of times um, the judge is going to make you settle these cases at some point or another. So it's always best to keep a cool mind and try and get through some of those issues. All right, Jeff, the next one I found to be pretty fascinating and I, 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 after having done this with you for so long, I'm surprised when I get new ones or I get ones that shock me. Um, this comes to us from Christopher. Christopher says, Dear Mr. Carpenter, I have a question. I know it's a hot button issue, but I don't want to get into the morality of abortion. But it is about abortion. Roe v. Wade legalized it. Now there are some states passing laws that once there's a heartbeat at six weeks, that there can't be abortions. Others saying, like in New York, well, you can even have an abortion moments after the baby is born. It seems like it's all over the place. How does this get handled in a, in, in a legal sense? Is this something that Mr. Michalowski would see going back to the Supreme Court for some kind of definition? Well, I, I think what Roe v. Wade really stood for was that um, abortion was an issue that um, would be up to the states to regulate. Um, and so what you're seeing is you're seeing a lot of the states come down with different laws based off of what the states want. Um, truly, is there any federal common law? Not really. There's very little out there because uh, the federal government is supposed to, to stay out of states' rights issues. But um, I, I think what we're seeing is exactly what the decision allowed, and that was for each state to, to determine what was right with regard to abortion. Next one comes to us from Carmen at Utica High School. Carmen says, um, Hondo, we are studying in school about the Constitution. We're studying taxes, how government's funded, all of that. I have a quick question. The Fifth Amendment says that we do not have to give information that could impugn us in a crime. However, in studying tax documents, you have to sign them stating that you are guilty of a crime if you lie. So could someone plead the fifth on their income taxes? Uh, yeah, you hear this all the time. Could you plead the fifth on the income tax? Yes, but no. Um, when you file the income tax return, you're actually signing an affidavit that everything has been reported to the uh, best of your knowledge, information, and belief, which hopefully it is. Um, so if you don't report something on the income tax, that's a crime itself. So how do you report, how do you not report, and still plead the fifth? Well, the document kind of speaks for itself at some point. Last one comes up from Katie and Mike in Saginaw. Katie and Mike said, Hondo, if you could ask the attorneys at SMD this question, I'd really appreciate it. 
Our neighbor filed a police report against us that was 100% false. Not only was it false, we actually had video proof that it was not true. When the detective came to our home to discuss it, we showed him the video. He was disgusted, asked us if he could have it. We said yes, as long as if we needed it in the future, we could retrieve it. He said, of course. He went to our neighbor, told him to knock it off and not waste time with us again. We mentioned to the detective... Had we been guilty of what this person accused us of, we would have been in serious legal trouble. Isn't there some type of resolution or law that he can't file a false police report because even the detective called it a lie but said it's probably not worth it? I don't understand how there can be laws that are not enforced. Why would he not get the same punishment I would have gotten had I been found guilty when we had proof it wasn't true and the cop admitted he lied? Well, that all comes down to what we call prosecutorial discretion. Um, it's up to the police to work up the case, uh, to pass it on to the prosecutor, and the prosecutor to decide where to go with it. Uh, if the detective wanted to move forward with it and thought it was something that they could prosecute the person for, then they probably would have contacted you, moved it along to the prosecutor, and then moved forward. Uh, depending what the issue is, I don't know, um, depending on what happened and facts and circumstances, every case is different. Who knows? Um, but again, it's up to the prosecutors to decide what the uh, time and resources and money should be used for. Uh, if there was something minor, nothing you could really do. There might be an action in, in civil court for malicious, malicious prosecution or defamation of character or, or character or something but it would have to be some pretty serious damages that you sustained um, for it to proceed. He is Jeff Michalowski from SMD Law, the official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Remember, when your next decision matters, you call them first and then you act. 866-529-3537 or smdalaw.com.